Welcome to What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. Got an announcement for you today coming from us here at What the World Needs is Jesus. We'll be at Wills Creek Assisted Living every Wednesday evening at 1.30 p.m. The address there is 1050 Airport Road West, Fort Payne, Alabama, 35968. We will be singing and someone will be bringing the word. We'd like to invite anyone who would like to come sit in with us to come sit in. You may come to be a blessing, but I assure you, you will leave with a blessing. We ask if you would, please say a prayer for the residents there at the assisted living. If you need more information, you can contact Brother Ricky Phillips at 256-630-1262. Now today's message is coming from Brother Harold O'Neill. The title of his message is Come Unto Me. He will be preaching out of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Then we're going to have a song from Sister Lynn Ledbetter singing, Clean. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell to turn your notification on YouTube. Follow, like, and share us on Facebook. And check us out on Instagram for some inspirational posts. Now let this video be a blessing. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're a young person listening, now. Uh, I want to thank you for taking up your time to listen uh, to what the world needs is Jesus. And that is the, uh, you're wondering about what's going on in the world and all the problems and the troubles. Uh, that's the answer right there. And that's why the world is in this shape because he came to his own and it talks about, in that sense, the Jewish people, but also it's talking about the man that he created too. Came to his own, his own received him not. But to as many as did receive him, gave he the power to become sons of God. Yeah. Now, I want to speak something here that the Lord wants me to speak very clearly. And I want to say this right here. This is not me as a minister speaking to you. This is the word of God by the spirit of God being said to you. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek, lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. The Lord says today, come to me, my people. My word, I have my servant now to say this to you. I know you. I gave you life. I know the problems that you face in this life, saith the Lord. I know everyone that is hearing my word right now. I say to thee, come unto me. Yes. That's yes. where you will find that that you're searching for and wanting. I am God. There is no other God beside me, saith the Lord. Come to me. Come unto me. And I will give you that peace and that rest. This saith the Lord. Amen. Now, he wants you to know that out there today. That wasn't just uh, Harold O'Neill saying, I'm going to read some scripture. That was by the Spirit. God knows. God knows who's listening. He knows your troubles. He knows your problems, yeah. your trials. He knows your comfortability, and he knows your uncomfortability. He knows. He is the one pure answer to all of our questions. Now, I want to... Uh, uh, I want to follow God. What we need today, the Bible, Satan has been limited. There is a devil, and, and uh, if, if you're not really 100% sure of that fact, wherever you're at in this world, if you're not sure of that, just look out and look around you. You'll see the evidence. Like uh, uh, if a tornado comes through, all you got to do uh, is look behind it and you'll see the evidence of it. Or a fire or any other thing. Uh, evidence of cold weather and snow. All you got to do is look and you'll see the evidence. Look into the world today. But again, I hear him saying to me, Come unto me, all ye that are burdened and heavy laden. He said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. You know, as I was coming up here today, well, before I even come started coming up here today, I, 
Uh, it's a good little journey from my home. I, I got to noticing the main road I got on. And it was 35 some of the way, uh, Highway 9 some of the way. But as I was coming up here, especially as I started up the mountain over here, uh, I noticed side roads. I noticed roads that pull off to the side. And the thought come to me that um, whichever road you take, you'll go where that road leads you. And in this life, whatever route you take, whatever road you get on, if you, uh, you know, we have to be uh, uh, born again. Now, in life, we come up with choice. We, in this country especially, now overseas, they have some problems, but as far as in our heart. See, that's where sin is at. It got in the hearts of man. Your problem's not the government. And if you're in a foreign country, your problem is not, not the military that rules against you now. But your problem is that that you was born with. Sin. Oh, yes. Sin. People have to be uh, little, little children. When you're born into this world, you're born lost. A lot of people don't like this. Don't like this. But this is the truth. That's why Jesus come to give his life that we could be born again, changed in our mind and heart, know the truth, know the truth so that we might follow him. And in your life, see, I was on a, a wrong road at one time in my life. I took the first drink of alcohol, and that put me on the road to destruction, sadness, and it even that road even led up till the, the day I, I met the lady I love now is my wife of 49 years to be pretty soon. And that road that I was on at that time, God put good things in my life, which was her. But the road that I was on, I didn't get off of that road. And it led for me to do things that were not showing love to her. See what I'm saying out there? You can't do good unless you've got Jesus in you. Life, you can't do it. It just won't happen. And there's somebody listening there, and you're wondering, why can't I overcome this thing? Why can I not overcome that thing that, that causes me to do this right here? Yeah. It's because you're not saved. I'm just going to take that right there. But I'll tell you what. Even... When, when I was on the wrong road. I joined the military. And what did that road lead me to? It led me to a war and almost my death. And I'm even feeling the results of uh, some injuries and some wounds even now. See, here's what it is. Uh, think about a map. And, you know, this day and time, you, well, even the guidance system, GPSs and all. These things were, God allowed these things to come up to give us guidance. Tell us where to go, what road to get on, when to turn, and all that. But a map shows it. But believe me, whatever road you're on today, if you're on a road without God, trusting in your ability and in even in what you've been taught, and even in the school system, they can teach you to count, write, and do all kind of stuff that can uh, be of use to you in this life. As far as builders and uh, manufacturers and doing all these things, but it can't set you free inside. It can't give you that joy. Millionaires are not happy. They ain't. Just listen to the news about what happens to them. Divorced so many times and uh, listen, listen to them, and uh, they got a lot of this biography and stuff like that that comes on TV now, and it tells you about the 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 lives that were the, they're on the path without God, but wanted the approval of man and wanted flesh satisfaction. They had some bad lives if the truth comes out. But I'll tell you what, if you'll get on the road. You know, on that Damascus road, like old Paul did? Oh, yeah. Brother, right. you, you're going you gonna, to you gonna come into contact 
with something yes. that will change your life. Jesus is real, y'all. He's real. He ain't just no figment of our imagination, no yeah. no attitude. He is real. Hallelujah. Woo! Yeah. Glory, he's real. And you can say, what are you hollering for? Because I feel him. Amen. He's Praise real. If you've got a headache, don't you feel it? If you got Jesus, you'll feel him. I yeah. promise you that right there. If you got a backache, you can feel him. Ain't that right? That is right. Come unto me. I want to read that again. A while ago, he had me to say it to you, but we're going to look at that again. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Yeah. I'll give you rest. That's a promise. And I'll tell you what, my wife used to tell me she got saved for me. She said, it's just like taking a bath. And I'll tell you what, that's what it's like. And every time the Spirit touches you, you can feel clean. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because he's the only pure thing in this world. Right. Only pure. Everything else has been touched by sin. All of us have. I'll tell you what, you know, uh, uh, give you, for instance, about man's effort. Uh, you hear what they're trying to do on TV and all, uh, in the government and all? They're going to stop this gun violence. Oh, yes, they are. They're going to pass legislation and laws against it and, and tell them whether it's against the law for you to shoot somebody. They started out here the other day, and they're pushing that, but if you listen to the news, it's increasing. Tell a, tell a fella that's going to shoot somebody, sir. You say, now, you can't do that. That's against the law. That fella say, yeah, I'm going to do it anyhow. That's why. That's because his thinking and his heart ain't been changed. It ain't been changed. Whatever path, whatever road you're on, now, like that 35, over there when I got on it, they ain't. If I stayed on that path, they ain't no way I could have missed Fort Payne. When you get on the road and you stay on it, they ain't no way you can miss where it goes. And I'm thinking right now about uh, how many people been going places and they seen the road and uh, they said, "I think I'll get on that road, just see where it goes." Just a few little ways down there. I say, man, this is the roughest road I have been on. This thing ain't getting me no worse but shook up and make doubt in me. That's how life is. The life we live now. But the new life with Jesus at the head, his glory in us and his presence in us, guiding us, leading us, leading us and, and us following the word of God. And even more than that, even more than following the Word of God, we can follow the Spirit of God, which there is an inner voice that comes within us. Oh, yes, an inner voice that will talk to us. Now, I can't explain that except one thing. You try it and you'll like it. That's the answer. This, The government, no, it's good to say we're going to try to pass laws so people won't do it. But you ain't until you get that man's heart changed. That man's gonna go ahead and do what he's saying. Yep. Have you not seen that it's increasing? The devil ain't scared of our government, not a bit. Most men ain't neither. But I'll tell you one thing: they are scared of. He is. That's when you go to say in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, Amen. Praise the Lord. When you go to speaking about Jesus, on, you get Mary. some attention. Yes. Yeah. And I, I might, we're going to go a little bit different today, but I can't get away from this. Come unto me. Yeah. That's the Lord saying to people today. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And I will give you rest. You know what? One day I listened. And I got interested in what was the truth behind this? And he revealed himself to me. He will you. He is the truth. And a lot of people say, well, if I go to church, I'll have to give up this. I'll have to give up that. And, uh, it ain't that you have to. It's that you can. See? It's a can-do with the Lord. It ain't a have-to. It's a can-do. Uh -huh. A 
can do. And, and, and I'm, I'm feeling it. Somebody out there today is hearing this. And the Lord's saying to you, come unto me. Come unto me, and I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest, said the Lord. I'll give you rest. And he will. I can't explain. I can't explain oxygen. I can't explain it. But you shut it off, and you'll know it ain't there. But when you get to breathing, you'll know it's there. And I can't explain it. But I just know that he is and that he will live with inside of us if we allow it. I can't explain birth and how a little old bitty baby about like that can grow up to be as big as me and even bigger. I can't explain that to you. I just know somebody said that's the way it's going to be and it's the way it is. Yes. And who was that somebody? God created us. I don't care what people say. Right. I'm, not, I'm not very interested in uh, the philosophy that people call that philosophy didn't have help me none. But the truth, the fact about the Word of God. And uh, today, coming to Him. Do you know what my worst enemy was? Me. All of you out there right now, do you got habits and things that you do that you wish you could quit? Do you? You know why you can't quit? Because you're captive. You're in prison from what what do they call it? Sin. 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 If we're captured by sin when we come into this world. What does the Bible say do about that? Train up a child in the way you he should go, and when he's old he will not depart. What are people doing now? You see all this going on on TV now? I'm, I'm going to get, this is going to be pretty clear, but it's true. Have you heard what's going around now? They're teaching young kids that they want to be a transgender. They want to be uh, girls to be boys and all that. You know why they're doing it? Because that's what they're teaching them. That's exactly why they're doing it. And how many fathers and, and things like that, their children, when, when my son was born, he, was, he didn't get to be around me much uh, as a lost man. But you know what? I was training him to drink. I was. I'd set him right beside of me. Think about it. But I got saved. And then I went to train him about Jesus. And because I trained him about Jesus, now, now look, listen here. This will work. And, and when they're old, they will not depart. Every child coming up, now I don't know, maybe they, somebody got that problem, but we're going to address it right now. Uh, raise them in church. If you raise them and train them and teach them, yeah. they're going to face the decisions of this life. They are because they're still lost unless during that period of time they've had a salvation experience. Uh as a child grows up, a young person, they're going to grow up with certain instincts of this flesh that's going to be there. I'm, I'm going to talk plain with you now about the desire for a, 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 a male to borrow, desire a female and vice versa. That's the way God made it, so they can get together and get married and, and raise children. Right. They're going to be there. But the Bible says that God is faithful. If you'll train them up in that way, let me tell you this, don't never get to the point where you don't try to teach them. Even when they go off, they're going to go off into this world. They're going to face sin. They, they are. Now, there's some things I'd rather not be talking about this, but I got to. I raised them in church while they're doing what they're doing. You keep on praying. If you trained them, hey, did you live it before them? Hmm. Have you lived it before them? Have you? Well, then they've seen it and they've heard it. You know what? God guarantees us when they're old, they will not depart. he bring them back. Yeah. Yes, he will. Mm -hmm. But they're going to have to fight that right there. But they can be set free from it. And if you go ahead, the Bible says it. It's in there. Train up a child 
in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart. That happened in my very life. I was telling you about it. I was training my son in church till he got to age and he chose not to go. But I didn't forget about my son. And I guarantee you he didn't forget about what he was taught. That's right. Amen. He did go out into the world. But guess what? He came back. God protected him and brought him back. Yes. Now he's with the Lord. You see, God is faithful. There is no answer for the problem that we're facing now except Jesus Christ. The governments cannot, they can't legislate it. And I ain't down in the government because it's, it's good to try to help people, but they don't have the power. The only that power Jesus Christ has that his Father's given him, the gospel that we, why do we share the gospel? We want other people to hear and believe. That's, that is totally what the gospel's about. The, the scripture says, uh, how can some believe in whom they have not heard? How can they hear it? So, uh, they be one sent, a preacher sent. I heard one day, didn't accept it right off, but I ended up did, and I'm happy now. I'm happy. Folks, believe me today, there's somebody out there listening. You're having problems with your family, maybe even with your mate, maybe with each other. Jesus says, I ain't there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus says, I ain't there. And, and see, when the Holy Ghost comes in us, the Spirit of God, he sets us free of what? Sin. He'll set us free of it. He'll set us free of it. I'm with my biggest enemy. I called me more trouble than, than anybody else. Why? Because of the path I was on. The road I was traveling. If they bumped in the road you're traveling, then you're going to get bumpy. But there is a highway and it's called holiness. We'll get on that. It'll smooth out. Now, I'm not telling you that you can come to a place where there won't be troubles and trials in this world. It's It's clear. But we can live in the power of God, not be controlled. I don't do the things I used to do. Right. I used to drink. I used to hurt people. I used to hate people. I used to lie. Didn't nobody make me do that. The enemy, uh, the power of sin in my life. But thank God, yeah. one day. <laughs> When the Spirit of God came in my life, when I called upon Jesus Christ, yeah, come on, Harold, amen. brother, when I done that, things changed, <laughs> and they changed drastically. Now, this world didn't quit picking at me, didn't have troubles and things, but I had a new path to follow. We are our own, I'm going to call it prison, but when we get set free by the knowledge of, of the Word of God and by the presence of the Spirit, then we are free indeed. Every one of us has got our testimony about the past. I wasn't born in church, but I was born again in church. Amen. Yeah. Somebody today is having this reality. I know uh, I love to get real excited and all, but this is serious. God's serious with somebody. In the book of Revelation, the Bible said, hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Folks, I don't want this to be critical or sound bad, but you can't believe everything you hear that every man or woman in this world has saying. You can't believe it. You can't believe it. But you can believe every word that's in the Bible, every word that God said in I'm not criticizing them people. I'm just saying, if they get right with Jesus, then you can start believing what they say. There is the truth, and then there's a lie. The truth is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yeah. Jesus of Nazareth, as some people know him, he is the Son of God. He did really die upon a cross for your and I's sins. And we really can obtain what the Bible says we can attain. We can, 
first of all, the forgiveness of sin. And it's just like a, like you're toting a hundred pounds and all of a sudden it's gone. We still have to, while we in this world, contend with this world and the things like sicknesses and things of that right there. But we've got help. We've got help. Uh, doctors are good help. Medicine's good help. But Jesus will set you free. Yes, sir. Amen. Jesus will set you free, and he's the only one, the only way. And I feel so serious today about this. Somebody is listening or will listen to this right here today. He said, let me read it one more time to you. I'm not going to try to go to any other scripture, but he wants you to hear this today. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Has your effort in life been productive in everything, or have you had troubles and sorrows, and especially in the life we're living in now, happiness and joy? Has it? Are you tired? Are you tired? I got tired. I, I wasn't getting no worse than I got tired. But one day, Jesus came to me. Now listen, I want to say this right here to you. If you don't listen to me or don't like me, whatever, or what I say, or whatever any other church says, if you don't like us, listen, that won't send you to hell. But when the Spirit of God does come, as he will come to ever. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So if you ain't done made the choice, you'll have an opportunity. When he comes, and, and you know, and you know inside, answer him, come to him. Back when I pastored the first church I pastored, it was in Piedmont, Alabama, and that place has a reputation, and if we was in there having meetings and all, a lot of times, uh, I didn't know all the people around. It was an old truck stop we got set up, but it was a church. And uh, a lot of people come I hadn't never seen, but they come out there to see what was going on. And uh, a lot of people would say to me, say, you know who that would uh, come up and talk to you? Some of them would come up and talk to him, and they'd say, hey, when you was talking up there, well, go, I started to come up there when I give them the invitation. They said, hey, do you know who that person was? And I said, well, no, I don't. They'd say, that right there person was supposed to be one of the biggest drug dealers in that city. God drawed them. And I told the person when they, when they said that to me, they said, uh, I started to come up. I said, look, I said, when you go home or between here and home, I said, and you feel that? I said, call on him. I said, he'll hear you. I said he will. And folks, if you won't never listen to a word from me or any other preacher, listen to that voice. Yes. That is your only hope. That's the only call you're going to get. Oh, you can't change your mind by yourself. You can't. You have to have him. And he, he said he came to set the, the captive free. Free from what? Free from sin. Free from the things that have had you and I, with me, I was so confused and mixed up. What I thought was right was wrong. And today, you say, well, I don't hardly know what to do. I can, I can. Some people say, well, I don't know hardly what to believe. I do. Right here. Amen, brother. Yeah. We're still in this world. Christians are still in this world, but we're not of this world. And we will be leaving this world going yes, to be sir. with the Lord. Another truth about the gospel. If you don't get saved in this lifetime, you will go to another place. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And the gospel will prepare you. That's why he calls you. Come here. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And you folks, whew, he'll give you rest. He's given me rest, and my brothers and sisters in the Lord, and he'll give you rest.
somebody today is listening. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to reach out there right now and touch them. Lord, one day you spoke to my heart. You spoke to my ears, Lord. Do that today, God. I'm asking you. We've obeyed you by speaking this word, and I'm asking you to also speak to these people wherever they're at, for you can set them free. You can. He can set you free, folks. He's the only one. The government can't do it, and there's good programs and, and attempts of man, good things going on. But as far as what's going to send us to hell, the salvation of our soul, they can't do nothing about that. Only Jesus. And that's what the church is all about. We're just trying to share it with other people. So think about it. And I know somebody's here, and I mean, I know. So Till next time when I talk to you, uh, if you want to call or text for prayer requests, and please do, folks, don't wait till it's too late. Don't, don't. You can call Brother Ricky Phillips at 256-630-1262. Brother Larry Moss at 256-603-0641. Brother Kenneth Crane at 256-557-2858. Or you can call my number at uh, Brother Harold O'Neill at 256 256- 475-5854. Folks, we're doing this to share the gospel yeah. with you. That's the only reason we're doing it. There ain't nobody paying us to do this except the Lord. He paying us by what? Letting us feel his presence. And if you want to email, it's what the world needs is Jesus. TV at gmail.com. So, I know that somebody out there heard today, please call one of these numbers, or most of all, call on Jesus. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Been doing it 44 years. Somebody out there today, Lord, has spoke to you. You've heard me speak. Now you're going to hear him speak to you. God bless you. Till next time, the name of Jesus.
washed in the blood of your sacrifice your blood flowed red and made me white my dirty rags are purified i am clean washed in the blood of your sacrifice your blood flowed red Washed in the blood of your sacrifice, your blood flowed red and made me white. My dirty rags are purified, I am clean, I am clean, I am clean. Oh, you are. I just want to say we appreciate you for watching today. I hope something was said, uh, maybe help you out in your daily walk with Jesus, amen, or help you out with your daily walk in the world, uh, uh, amen, that might change your mind from being lost to being saved, amen. Glory to be to God. If you got a prayer request today, you can send a private message to facebook.com forward slash what the world needs is Jesus. You can call or text Brother Ricky Phillips, 256-630-1262. Brother Kenneth Crane at 256-557-2858 or Brother Harold O'Neill at 256-475-5854. You can also email us at what the world needs is Jesus TV at gmail.com. And like I say, we appreciate you today and we thank you for tuning in. Until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you. Amen. <laughs>